Hey folks, just wanted to welcome you to this week's recap. We thought we'd do a video recap just to highlight some of the 25 toggle button switcher slider examples we received over the past week. So let's go ahead and just jump in and take a look at what the community shared. So in this first example shared by Charles, it's a stopwatch and timer. So you have a couple options here for the stopwatch, click start, and it actually starts to count up a, uh, a timer, like a real stopwatch. Go ahead and stop, reset, and you can also add your own timer where you can adjust the minutes and seconds. That's a really cool example. Uh, Charles is certainly one of the more advanced uh, users in our community, and thankfully he made this source file available for us uh, so you can take a look at, and, at, at his file and see kind of how he put this all together. Really cool example here from Paul Alders. It's a math challenge with a built-in timer. So the idea is you complete each of these series of uh, math tables and you have the choice to do a timed or uh, untimed uh, uh, challenge. So here, here's a little switcher slider right here. If I turn on the actual timer, I begin, and you'll see this little road right here starts to build. This is my visual timer. If I don't make a choice fast enough, um, and I, hey, I got the answer right and I didn't even look. Um, I'll, let the, I'll let the timer run out this time. You see what happens. So you've got a few seconds and just uh, before this road runs out and then you're told, hey, that's not right. You didn't select the right response and it, the car just moves on without you. Paul also shared his source file. So you can kind of take a look at how that timer was built. Another one of those uh, inspirational files that might give you some ideas for including not only toggle options, but also timer options. All right, so next up is Tracy who shared this toggle button for play pause. She actually created this little animated book. So you, if you're watching or reading a, uh, an animated movie or a other type of timeline based animation, you can toggle the play and pause for uh, the video or the, the other animation that's on the slide. Really super cool example. Here's the rewind button where you can start it all over, which just reloads the slide, but a really practical example of uh, just simple toggle buttons. One button on and off states, for, or in this case, play and pause, and it just controls the uh, either the, probably a video in this case, or it could be a pause and resume timeline trigger. So really cool example there, Tracy. All right, so and next up is Jeff Kortenbosch's example. He played off of Kevin Thorne, who actually inspired a lot of a lot of this week's challenge with this really creative use of motion paths for a toggle switch. Well, Jeff kind of did a, uh, a little blog post on uh, really just comparing and contrasting the animated approach, which is a little bit more, well, okay, it's a lot more complex in terms of managing different shapes and, and, and motion paths, and just using a two-state on-off type uh, toggle trigger. So one of the benefits here is that you can just pick this button up really easily, move it around to different projects. This one, you've got to kind of manage a few different uh, objects on uh, layer so are on the timeline so it's just a little bit more work but you get a really elegant effect and it's kind of nice to uh, see the the differences here and especially if you're going to make that that um, maybe that, that that point with the you know your client about the trade-off between okay do we really need that much um, elegance in our button or can we just do something really quick and dirty that still looks pretty darn good using just a simple uh, two-state trigger two-state uh, button object and I think Jeff shared, yep, another one. Here's a, a good use of an animated um, toggle switch, probably all created from, I'm guessing, uh, bitmap images here. It looks like you might have just exported them and then animated the, uh, the thumb switch right here um, once he got it into Storyline. So really elegant example. I like how this little button glows to indicate when, right, the little fade in right there to indicate when uh, the button is actually on. And let's take a look at Michael Hines. So first off, Michael's been doing sliders before we even had sliders in Storyline. So this is all built in Storyline 1. Um, Michael's been sharing some really cool examples over the last two years with ways to simulate sliders in Storyline. So what's really neat is that these are all just based on uh, Storyline 1 triggers and a heck of a lot of state changes um, throughout the uh, file. So he's got a couple blog posts on this. You'll definitely want to check it out because uh, if there's someone who can figure anything out, it's definitely Michael, but I love I love these examples. And I think he has one more. Yep, so another one here. This is one of his earlier ones. And you can just see how you can 
not only control the actual slider with the drag and drop, but I like the little fill percentage here in for the track. That's a really nice touch, just additional state changes based on either the current variable or um, value for each of the sliders. So a uh, really cool example from, from Michael Hines. And this next example is just a super simple one that I put in uh, just to show how a two-state slider, a two-step slider could be used with uh, different state changes to indicate uh, on and off. So just a, a really basic example compared to some of the things we're seeing here uh, already this week. Oh, all right. So here's a, here's a really fun example from Nancy. Um, it's an elevator. And so when you click the uh, toggle button, you catch some folks in different uh, situations in the elevator. You close the elevator and we'll open it and you get something else. And this just kind of keeps going and going. So you'll definitely want to spend some time to uh, uh, see who all is uh, in the elevator and what they're doing. So another fun and creative example uh, from Nancy. Uh, let's come up here for the doors. So this is uh, Magdalena's example. Now, she's a little, Magdalena's a little bit new to the challenges, but boy, she does some really uh, great work. And I love the elegance here with these animated ease in and ease out drawers. So similar to the toggle button, but only more uh, applied to an actual object. So you can pull things out of the drawer, take a look at them, and uh, close the door, of course. Whoops. Close the door handle. And then you have another one off to the side. Really elegant example and use of subtle animations to create a toggle effect, only not in a traditional or expected uh, button style, but just actually using a desktop objects. So here's a fun and kind of creative example from Alexander. And so the whole concept here is it's like a toggle button, but when you click it, it's actually going to play an animation and you can see how uh, the fill is applied. And we click it again and it toggles back where the fill goes back to blue. So a really interesting concept here uh, from Alex, who always comes up with some, uh, some really neat ideas, but I really like how the, uh, the use of the motion pass and the fill are applied for each of these. Okay, so this is from, uh, from Nick, and Nick always comes up with a pretty uh, creative example. So it's just an old school analog tape recorder, and it's got some built-in sound effects, which I actually had missed when I first went through this. I actually had my headphones off. Still thought it was a pretty neat example because he has the little video clip right here, um, but it wasn't until I saw some comments in the blog post that I realized that he had uh, also included uh, some very appropriate sound effects here with this example. Um, one thing I kind of liked here was uh, Nick actually had filmed and made his own video clips for the, um, the tape heads moving backwards and forwards and playing. So a uh, super nice touch here uh, in this example. And of course, the toggle buttons uh, simulating a real world or uh, the old school uh, tape recorder, tape player. So really great example there, Nick. Okay, so this is uh, an example Ian had shared earlier in a button challenge we did, but it's totally appropriate for uh, this week's toggle button. Uh, Ian does a really good job with animation. So if I click each of these icons, you'll see the effect here. So just keep an eye on each icon. So a real subtle effect with the, uh, the chat bubble uh, animated in and out. Here are the, uh, the, the document animation. Really great effect, it's totally subtle but it does add a, um, a really nice element to each of these, uh, these buttons. And then for the evaluate, you get a little animated chart that comes in. But um, check out some of Ian's other challenge entries because he really does a great job uh, animating in Storyline. All right, so this example is shared by Dave, David C., who is a first-time challenger this week. So welcome to the challenges, David. A super simple example, but actually exactly what we were looking for in uh, this week's challenge, right? So you have a toggle on and off. Uh, this did two different states for the toggle button. And then you're just basically uh, showing two different images, both uh, with the lights on and then the lights off to actually take a look at um, how this amplifier uh, still works. So really elegant example, bitmap graphics used for the toggle switch combined with some photos. And then of course, the text description here, but great. Great first entry, David. Hope to see you in some future challenges. All right, let's take a look at the next one. All right, so this example was shared by Monse. I think she actually did an updated version. We'll see that in a, in a minute. But 
then and now type concept. So the toggle instead of an on off is just used for a, a then and now. So you can see some historic pictures of the Arizona Biltmore then and now. So a really cool concept. And we actually have a future challenge based around before, after, and then and now type concepts. So uh, that's a neat idea. And Jeff is in and back with his third example this week. So go Jeff. A uh, really cool example and idea for customizing your overall preferences for slide design. So when I turn this, this slider on right here, actually customizes the background for the slide. Really neat concept. Maybe you want to customize the look and feel or other types of visual elements on the slide. Using a simple toggle and a variable, you can evaluate uh, what the learner prefers and then make those adjustments going forward in the course. So really good example here, Jeff. All right, so take a look at the next one. All right, so this was uh, Monse's updated version. So basically kind of working from the same concept of the then and now. In this case, she actually just worked with adding a transition to each of the images, and you can see how it subtly fades in and out, and just controlling that by uh, setting a variable and then changing states for the top image. So a really elegant effect here for uh, comparing and contrasting two different uh, types of images or, or content. All right, let's jump back up here. And a really cool example from Ann Seller. So what she did really in here that's really nice, and we'll let this uh, load here, is really customize the icons on the toggle buttons. Really like what she came up with. And so here's our intro, and she's gonna give us five different examples of uh, toggle buttons. So what, the eye is closed, and so we don't see it. Go ahead and click it. And then here it is open and you can actually identify the owl. And then she goes through um, a lot of different of uh, sort of hidden animals. You don't see them. I have to click too fast. And there he is. Wait, was he really there the whole time? I guess he was. Absolutely love this example from uh, Anne regarding both the way she customized the, the look and feel of the toggles, but then also the way she's using sort of a, a hidden picture type activity uh, in her in her example. So really great job, uh, Anne. All right, so when I messaged Phil this week and said, hey, do you have anything you can submit for the toggle button? He said, how many do you want? <laughs> I said, I'll take all you have. And he had a lot. So really great collection of just but different button styles. This one's an actual slider. That's a slider as well. And some toggles on and off for the power buttons. And then you get a nice glow here and change it from red to green. But really cool. Uh, example of just different ways that buttons can be used and how they can be applied in terms of the different states of on and off and and uh, colors and, and, and different styles. So really great collection of inspirational buttons from uh, superhero Phil Mayer. Let's jump into the next one. And once again, Ian uh, Monk shared another example. And here's some more animation techniques he uses. So we have our starting buttons. And as we click each of these, you get a sort of a tweening effect uh, by moving and morphing these uh, shapes into uh, new icons. <laughs> really love the concepts here. And I think one more. Yep. And then back. We can return those to the original state. Told you this guy, uh, Ian, does a really good job with his animations, but a nice way to do, kind of create some toggle buttons or toggle icons using simple animations and shapes in Storyline. Ashley came up with a pretty neat idea. She uses uh, toggle buttons as sort of a yes-no approach in her get to know her quiz. So rather than a true-false type uh, approach, she's actually using a slider to let you answer the questions about her and show what you know in terms of uh, how well you know Ashley. So I really like the quiz aspect of this. There's probably a lot of different ways that we could uh, extend this type of concept to other projects, but um, I like making the decision where they have to actually kind of drag that slider once in a while. And sometimes it just changes, right, just how they expect to interact with the course and it kind of gets them to touch the screen a little bit different. So really cool concept and idea, Ashley. She also has a blog post on this one, so please remember to uh, check that out when you get a chance. And keeping going with the uh, Creative ideas, here's a pick your avatar approach from Nancy. So her second entry this week. 
as you drag each of these icons over, you can choose your icon, your avatar for the course. And of course, uh, what would you continue? And that would be the avatar you'd see represented um, for uh, your host or, or presenter during the actual uh, course. A lot of different ways to approach this, right? Customize, we saw what was the earlier one when we customized the background from Jeff. And uh, now we're actually customizing our characters using toggle switches. So another really cool idea with a lot of possibility for uh, allowing learners to do a little bit more customizing of their actual uh, courses. So cool, cool idea there, Nancy. And here's Linda's, I should have pulled up the actual demo, but here, whoops, here's the final product. So <laughs> more fun in this example, um, one of the first one, what I had it on did not have the uh, sound on, but let's go ahead and turn on the TV and we'll be able to uh, see what's going on here. Ah, I don't know about that, keep it turned it on. And you can see the little animated thumb here is actually starting to uh, change the channels. Looking for something good, right? Modern Family, like Game of Thrones. There's got to be something good on TV this week. Here we go. This guy does a really good job with his screencast, so uh, she definitely found the right, <laughs> the right, the right channel. So really cool uh, concept there. Uh, from Linda, so, and thanks for the little nod on the, uh, the old um, screencast on that, so, neat one to check out. Alexander with his third example this week, so a lot of repeat challengers. Um, neat example here, so kind of a combination of what we saw from Jeff with customizing the slide background. This time we can actually customize our character, and you see a little countdown timer, which is a really nice touch. All right, we'll go with uh, the lady. Yeah, I'll keep it here. Choose your ride. All right, we'll go with the car. But I like the timer, right? You got a little bit of time. Go, don't let them play with it too much. Keep them moving along. Something a little bit more manageable will be, okay? And then he's going to wrap all this together in a final screen where here's the character you chose, here's your ride, and your, uh, your weapon. So really nice example, a uh, complete example of how you can customize certain elements of uh, your project. So really cool, cool uh, example there, Alex. And the final example this week came from Nagarjuna, who shared uh, three different types of toggle buttons here to control different areas on the slide. So in this first one, we can control the music. You get a little animation there to show the speakers are on. Video is going to play, right? So you get a little animated TV show here. Or I just turn out the lights and maybe make this a little bit easier to read our on-screen uh, content. So a lot of neat ideas shared this week. Remember, the challenges are still open, even though we uh, completed this screencast today on Thursday. Um, if you have an idea for a toggle button, please feel free to share it. We'd love to see what you come up with. And of course, we'll feature your work in uh, the weekly recap. So thanks everyone for some amazing examples and we'll see you in tomorrow's challenge.